Okay, team, how are we doing? We've got Ryan Hager here. How are you, mate? Doing great, thank you. Good to see good. you, Ben. Yeah, good. Good to see you. Just popped out of screen, but we've got you back. Um, mate, sounds like you've had an incredible summer, just super busy. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, cranking since I was just talking to you about uh, since COVID hit and since Tiger won the Masters, you know, and everything, golf's been crazy. So, uh, yeah, the uh, instruction lesson T has been very busy. Yeah, it's just been super exciting. And, um, yeah, I think it's you're probably ready for a little snowboard and a wind down. But before you do that, we're going to have a look at this uh, student that you've been working with who um, you said you've only worked with, with it for a couple of weeks and it's just looking unbelievably different. Uh, who is he? Where's, where does he live? And how long have you been working with him for? Yeah, uh, his name's Mitch. I'm stealing one of your countrymen. He lives in Australia and uh, we've worked together just a couple of times, but early progress is looking pretty darn good. Um, so I thought he would be a good case study to, to show for this. Awesome. Love it. All right, let me grab this up really, really quickly. Uh, just so no one's confused, that is Mitch on the left, <laughs> Tiger Woods <laughs> on the right, and uh, I chose to use him kind of as my model um specifically mitch wanted some help with uh his wedge play sort of distance wedges from 100 to 40 50 yards sort of not your pitching and chipping shots more so like this is kind of a relatively full swing um wedge and uh the complaints were sort of too high of a launch a lack of control over contact distance a little bit of direction as well but um you know not seeing the launch that he wanted not having the crispness to the hit um and uh so that's those were the main sorts of objectives for us as we start so if you can take it back to the beginning yeah and uh, i'd love to see a couple lines on the screen if you can draw one vertically just through the center of his head sort of top of the head through the nose and then actually yeah, all the way down to the golf ball and then do the same for Tiger. Yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and then take them both kind of up to the top. Unfortunately, Tiger's camera moves just a little bit. Um, or actually, you know what? Before you go up to the top, take them back to the, the setup really quick. Uh, so a lot of what he and I spoke about was dynamic loft, um, controlling wrist angles, shaft lean. Uh, I sort of described to him the effect that that has on low point and trajectory, contact, things like that. Um, and I, I mentioned too, like the effect that the setup has on where he arrives at impact. So just as you kind of look at the two side by side there, um, you know, from top of head down to golf ball, you can see a big difference in a few things. One, stance width uh, and ball position were kind of the two main ones. So you can see a pretty wide stance for Mitch, a very narrow stance for Tiger. Yep. Um, and then the accompanying ball position looks quite a ways back for Mitch and significantly more forwards for, for Tiger, um, which is funny because Mitch has the ball back wide stance and he's flighting it high. <laughs> whereas Tiger has narrow stance ball forward and is flighting it much much lower so um i'll talk about kind of the, the things i had him specifically practice a little later but we we went right into an adjustment with the setup um tried to copy more of the tiger woods so now you can take it up to the top would be great just really quickly on that this is why it's so hard to fix yourself isn't it because like mitch there is no way in a million years he would have thought all right i'm getting wedges too high i need to change the ball position further forward like yeah right it would never occur to him sort of thing. So this no. is just one of those things where it's like <clears throat> trying to fix it on your own can be just so difficult. Yeah. The, the unfortunate, uh, you know, reality in golf is usually the logical decisions, not the, not the yeah, right one. Exactly. <clears throat> All right. Now, uh, if you could do the same for, same for Tiger there, take him. So Tigro, yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I thought his, I thought his pivot was okay. Um, I think the sort of arm structure, Tiger keeping his hands, the grip a little bit more in front of the chest yeah. would be, um, I think that that's more desirable, but I think you can probably get away with what Mitch is doing here. There wasn't a major change needed uh, wrist angles on the way back. 
it's more so what happens after this on the way into the ball that we were we were focusing on. So if you take Mitch kind of forwards, yeah, you're going to see a, a pretty significant lateral slide, uh, specifically the upper body, yeah. getting a little too far ahead of the ball. <clears throat> and then as he's coming through the hit, there's just a rapid unloading of the club. Um, and you're going to see a, a significant breakdown of sort of his wrist angles. There's a lot of throw. Uh, you see the shaft kind of stand up a lot through the hit. And then the, the ball is going to launch fairly high despite the, the ball being fairly back uh, in yeah. the stance. So if you can go with Mitch about two frames past impact, maybe one more, uh, one more after that. Perfect. The video tiger didn't quite have the frame rate. So that's the best I could do. Uh, if you take tiger then down to about the same position. <clears throat> yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, this was kind of the most glaring. And actually, if you could extend that line, the green line, yeah. all the way up sort of past his head. Yeah. <clears throat> and then do the same for Mitch, obviously. That'd be great. <clears throat> this was my illustration to him of like you know what's happening with the wrist the, the um, upper body the shaft of the club um, and I think this paints a pretty clear pretty clear picture of like how the club's getting delivered to the ball so yeah um, that's kind of the side by side that I use I think you can see a uh, uh, more centered sort of upper body uh you can see with tiger like knees hips feet sort of driving forwards but the head the sternum staying more centered more behind the ball yeah um, he's definitely hitting a really this is a flighted shot isn't it you can see yeah. that it's the perfect there. model to use and this is why like great coaches can so, sort of say I've got the perfect swing for what this guy needs to work on, right? So we need yeah. you know, a really flighted tiger shot here where he he definitely is yeah. just holding you can see him hold onto these angles just so much better, even from that yeah. point there, can't you? And it's um sure. yeah, it's that he's probably playing is he do you know where this is? It's not in Britain or anything, is it? No, it's probably you can see uh, it somewhere where it's windy. Yeah, I think so. Uh I'm not positive and it, the, it's a tee shot too i gotta think it's a high lofted club so i gotta think it's probably like 120 or 30 yard par three maybe yeah. it looks like desert could be arizona or something yeah um, totally but i i think just a good representation of kind of what needs to happen instead of what he's doing so yeah the response i got was was very clear understanding he sort of was able to see exactly what needed to be done. Yeah. I sent him some drills. The main one that I, I had spoken to him about was uh, sort of taking a pitching wedge, putting, uh, narrowing the stance significantly. So actually, if you want to pull up the, yeah, let's uh, the other one. Yep. So on the right now, uh, this was started as a drill and he's like, man, I'm going to use this shot. <laughs> yeah. So Instead of the video on the left he sent me was more of a sand wedge. Um, what I asked him to do was take a pitching wedge, put it as close to his left foot as possible and narrow the stance fairly significantly. So yeah. uh, while the ball position relative to right foot, you know, doesn't look crazy different. I think to the left, it, it certainly is quite a bit different. Um, yeah. And his yeah. goal was very anti-technical. I basically said to him, ball should feel forward and you have to hit this pitching wedge solid but the goal is to basically get it to go along the ground like how low could you hit this yeah. shot um and i think like the you know the video here is going to speak for itself you're going to see a a much more centered pivot i think maybe i didn't mention this before um stance width in my opinion and just from people i've spoken with uh matters a lot as far as like lateral motion so yeah from right here i think mitch on the left with the huge stance that stance width and the the wideness there supports a lot of lateral motion totally. when you have a when you have a wide driver stance right the the purpose is so that you can kind of move behind the ball sit into your trail side more um you know it 
support a lot of speed. It's like all the things that we don't really want to do with, with a wedge. So you see great wedge players more with a smaller stance, promotes more rotation. Uh, it makes lateral motion more difficult because you'll typically see someone lose balance if there's too much um, side to side motion. Um, so that's, that's usually one of the first things I, I would change. Yeah, I agree. Um, the objective of like, how low can you hit this shot from a forward ball position forces him into more of the impact that you're going to see here. Um, these should be both slow-mos so we can get them both into a pretty, pretty synced up, pretty synced up. Kind of deal. <clears throat> so as he gets into, you know, this section of the swing, if you could pause the one on the right and then scroll left to about shaft parallel, uh the one on the left yeah if you yeah. scroll out to yeah parallel right you can see a, a really different actually look one back one or maybe two back one back yeah uh one more one more perfect so both of those are shaft parallel to the ground yeah uh, you can see a huge difference in wrist angles but also like handle location like the glove yeah. hand He's not wearing a glove on the left, but his left hand is quite a ways. You can see the daylight between his hands and his right thigh versus the logo of the glove more in the middle of the, the right thigh. To me, that's a, that's a checkpoint I, I look for in, in most swings. Oh, yeah. um, you also can see a huge difference in the legs, the, the upper body tilts and, and rotation. Yeah. Um, Best thing about this is the impact position that you're going to see him get to. <clears throat> Significantly lower dynamic loft, um, way different sort of overtaking rate. Where you know, if you watch the next couple frames where they're synced up, you're going to see the club pass the hands at a, a significantly faster rate, and that's where the ball sort of rides the face it, it launches significantly higher with a lot less spin um and you know the one on the left he's going to compress it flight it lower grabs the grooves spins quite a bit more um you can see how much like rotation sort of takes the club through and the, the club mm -hmm. doesn't hinge back with a lot of uh radial deviation so right yep. in the section to the finish um so I think for, you know, this was literally one lesson and there were a couple little uh, uncomfortable things he mentioned, but for the most part, he was like thrilled with uh, yeah. the progress. It's awesome. It's, um, it can be a really difficult thing for someone who's never had, you know, I mean, I sort of hate to use the word lag or store up or stored energy or whatever you want to call sure, it. Sure, yeah. If you've never had it, it can be really quite difficult to get, even if you you know, some people would say yeah. you can't even get it when you're standing there in person trying to, you know, hold on to someone. So, to, sure, yeah. you know, it just shows you that if you can articulate things the right way, you don't need to be yeah. there at all. And um, he's a good player. I think he said he plays off a four. Like, he's a good golfer. It's just yeah, like. Right. That's pretty rare, almost, isn't it? To have that sort yeah. of, that lack of um, sort of wrist angle control through the ball and hit it that high yeah. with wedges is pretty rare. Some people, you know, have a knack for squaring the face and hitting in the middle, and you can get away with a lot of stuff. If, uh, I learned. You, know, you can do yeah. those two things. So, uh, so what I, I love about this is that if you take that to there, that probably looks like Tiger did in his model. You know what I mean? Where it's, yeah, right. This is right. all moved around together as one thing. So I think you said it, but the one on the right, this is more of a shoulder and arm release, body release, isn't it? Like this. Yeah. And the one on the left, this is a hand release. So this Absolutely. is like this is a stalling body and increasing loft right. and those things. It's like it's just sure. It looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. It's funny, you know, and the things on that he's doing on the left are good from uh you know 12 to 25 yards, but they're not good from 45 to 105 with, with the exact same club. So, you know, the things he was good at kind of make him a good pitcher of the ball, but not a good flighter of the ball yeah 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 probably great you know flop shots over a bunker <laughs> yeah, flop right. and throw it up in the air but terrible yeah. if it gets windy at all and, and being able to control that flight so ryan that's awesome that was really really cool and it just i mean the thing that i just never 
never ceases to amaze me is how fast you can get people good. You know, like that's a couple yeah. of weeks interacting a couple of times. Like that's just, that's really cool. Yeah. All it takes is the, you know, the right combination of drills, feedback, information. Love it. Okay, mate. Well, um, everyone can obviously access, access you on Skillist anytime. You're moving into the colder months, so you're not standing out on that uh, that that hot tea, that range tea. So you're inside and just right. golf swings all winter. So he's ready and waiting for you, people. But um, where else can everyone get you on Instagram? Ryan makes some of the coolest content on Instagram, I would say. He this might be the first time you've ever heard him speak because he doesn't. I was going to say the. Uh... The silent treatment has been lifted. Uh, yeah, Ryan Hager underscore PGA. That would be my Instagram handle. Uh, mostly active on there. So awesome, that's where you get the free stuff. And I'd look forward to, to working with anyone that wants to get better. All right, mate. Well, uh, thanks for your time. And let's do this again sometime soon. Great. Thanks, babe. All right.